One of my favorite verses of scripture in all the Bible is James chapter 2, verse 26. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. When I was a brand new Christian, I was excited about my salvation. So excited that I told everyone, anyone who would listen, and even quite a few who wouldn't listen. However, as I matured in my understanding of the true commitment my yes to Jesus required, I was struck and convicted by the fact that faith without works is dead. And even worse, Jesus was not pleased with my dead works. Although my confession of faith was right, my lifestyle was all wrong. This is the situation that the devil found one of the disciples in. Judas Iscariot said the right things, hung out with the right crowd, and even followed the right Messiah. But somewhere along the path to righteousness, Judas lost himself in the power of greed and the love of money. In response to an absolutely stunning display of worship to Jesus Christ by the disciple Mary, instead of joining her in adoration, Judas Iscariot says this in John chapter 12, verse 5. Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. Now, many of us know what happens next in the story, but pause for a moment. For the disciples seated at the table alongside Jesus and the other disciples, you have to admit Judas made a good point. In the economy of Jesus' day, 300 denarii was the equivalent of one year's wages. In today's economy, a minimum wage job here in the Diocese of California, Mary poured $29,120 worth of oil on Jesus' feet within a matter of minutes. One year's worth of wages poured out within a matter of minutes. Secondly, not only could Mary's worship be considered financially wasteful, but it was also liturgically unorthodox. You see, during Jesus' time, women were all but forbidden to become disciples of a male teacher and were physically situated away from the males during worship. Furthermore, in 1 Corinthians 11, verse, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 15, the Apostle Paul tells us that a woman's hair is her glory. So not only was this woman learning at the very feet of Jesus, but she took it further than any other disciple could have ever imagined and washed his feet. His dirty, stinking, nasty been walking in the desert and the sand and the mud. She washed his feet with the glorious crown of her own hair. Now, if you remember yesterday on Palm Sunday, we talked with you about Jesus' word to the weary in their pain and suffering. This Holy Monday, we want to show you the difference between the dead works of Judas and the living worship of Mary. 
You see, Judas was right about Mary's worship being both financially wasteful and liturgically unorthodox. But Judas was wrong about the difference between dead works and living worship. Dead works happen when you do the right thing for the wrong reason. Judas said the right thing. Judas was trying to do the right thing, but he was doing it for the wrong reason. Now that we have paused to ponder what was really in Judas's heart, John reveals it to us in chapter 12, verse 6. Judas said that, uh, Judas said this, not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Judas never really cared about the poor. He only cared about his own pocket. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 3 says, If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Judas was walking in dead works. Living in dead works. Trafficking in dead works. Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 15 verse 8 that dead works happen when we worship Christ with our lips. But our hearts are far from him. What was Jesus saying? He was saying that dead works lead to dead worship. Oh, but like Jesus Christ raised Lazarus from the dead, Jesus can take your dead works and transform them into living worship. Hebrews chapter 9 verses 13 through 14 says that, if the blood of goats and bulls with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, how much more will he purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God? We serve a living God, not a dead God. And a living God demands and deserves living worship. Folks might tell you that you're being financially wasteful when you pay your tithes and you give your offerings every time the church doors are open, every time we tell you that there is a need or an expense and you open your wallet and you open your heart. Folks might tell you that you're being financially wasteful. Your haters might say that your praise is liturgically unorthodox. Uh, they might say, oh, it don't take all of that. You don't have to lift your hands and raise your voice. You don't have to stomp your feet. You don't have to wave your hands or clap your hands or Sing all loud. You don't have to go to church every Sunday. <laughs> Your haters might say that you're liturgically unorthodox. Oh, but with God's help, we can imitate Mary and ask Jesus to turn our hearts from dead works to living worship. 
Amen.